and um, we're doing, we've been doing a few segments where we have some of Bright Horizons college coach educators talking a little bit about their own personal experiences. Um, and today I'm excited to have my colleague, Kenan Dick, join. He is a former admissions officer at Swarthmore, at Johnson State, and at Drexel. Um, but he's also someone who went to college and had his own unique experience. So we're going to hear about that today. Hi, Kenan. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for joining. I appreciate sure. it. Um, so the thing that I wanted to talk to you about today, which I will confess, I literally had no idea that you did a PG year until I saw it on the schedule. I said, mm -hmm. Kenan did a PG year, and you and I have been working together now for 14 long time. years. A long time. <laughs> and I had no idea. So why mm -hmm. don't we start with something super basic, which is, what is a PG year? Well, um, basically, it's a fifth year of high school. And uh, so when students go into their senior year at, you know, whether it's a prep school or a, pre or a public school, and, um, and they want to do, they just need more preparation, they can do that fifth year beyond graduation. So I had already graduated from high school and I uh, was doing this additional year. And the, there is usually two groups of students that choose this pathway. One is a group of students who didn't feel like their academic record in high school was quite up to what they wanted to do and, and fit their, their needs and their goals. And then number two um, were often students who were uh, athletes and wanted to get a second look at scouts um, or just needed an extra year of maturity, which was often the, the case for hockey players. So there was a number of reasons why you might do something like this. And, you know, where I went, it was basically 50-50, that there's about half of the students were kind of working on their academic record, and the other half of the students were athletes and working on um, getting scouted for a, a different school. Got it. Okay. So, so those mm -hmm. are the students who might consider it. Um, one, one thing I would throw out there for those who are considering it for academic reasons, um, and kind of feel free to weigh in, my, my sense is, if you didn't have such a great ninth and 10th, but you started to improve in 11th and were even better in 12th, and now you're going to build on that in a PG year, that could be impactful. If you basically tanked your whole high school career, going to a PG program and suddenly getting straight A's might not change things all that much, but what's Correct. your sense? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, it's really um, for students who are kind of at the margin, who just needed that extra boost, um, but were most of the way there to begin with. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, um, one of the values of going to, I went to Kimball Union Academy for my PG year. And one of the interesting things about the way that they, they do it is that it's a complete reset. Mm, so, um, so the GPA that I had for, for them and the class rank that I achieved there um, was based solely on that additional year and not necessarily incorporated with um, the prior academic curriculum uh, okay. from uh, from a public school. So, uh, so it really kind of was a, a feeling of um, kind of resetting the clock for me mm -hmm. and starting fresh and having a, a, a fresh slate to work with. And I think for students who get to their junior senior year have found that motivation and really want to kind of um, improve their set of options, the PG year could be a really good option for them. Got it. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. So what motivated you to do a PG year? I, based on what you just said, it makes me think maybe it was academic, but I also know mm -hmm. that you're an athlete. So what was it yep. for you? Um, it was primarily academic. And okay. so, um, you know, some of my friends, all of my friends that uh, that I had in high school were really good students. And so, you know, and I wasn't quite as good as they were in terms of my performance. And I wanted to have a, a chance to go to the, some of the types of schools that they were going to, or at least ones that were more challenging than the ones that I had been admitted to. So, um, so my coming out of high school, the my top option was University of Vermont mm -hmm. in terms of its selectivity. But at the same time, it was literally two miles from my yeah. house, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, that is literally my backyard. It's That's in not my a backyard. Great I yeah. had swum there for practice every day for like six years. And so, you know, it wasn't something that I found terribly appealing. I wanted to go try something different and, and go to a new place, et cetera. And so, um, so I found this as a, as a chance for me to, uh, to kind of, again, reset my record and uh, also kind of 
build a stronger foundation in math, um, which was, I was a year behind in math. I was also the youngest, um, second youngest student in my class. Yeah. So it was just an extra year of maturity, a, a year where I'm still in high school, but I'm away from my house, right? So I'm mm -hmm. living on campus and starting to build some of those um, habits that you need to be successful when you go to college. So when I went as a freshman to William & Mary, it wasn't my first time away from home, right? right. Um, so I had some of those structures kind of and habits still in place that were enabled me to be more successful there. So I, I am assuming that it was a really good experience for you and one that you enjoyed. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And Are I think for the, 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 certainly the students who were kind of academically focused, what I found was that it was a, a small group of us and we were really supportive because uh, mm -hmm. we we're all in it for the exact same reason. Yeah. Right. And so, um, so there was a real camaraderie there and a real sense of support. Um, so, you know, Pete and I would work on homework together if we were something that we were, uh, math problems or something we we're stuck on, you know, we could just cross the hall and ask. And it was just, it was a really great group of people. And, uh, and I th found that to be really helpful as well. Yeah, I mean, it sounds great. And, and it is nice to get that experience of living away from home. At least, you know, you're ready to go just, this is a, a little step before the, the bigger step. Are there kids having gone through this and maybe seen other students go through this? Are there students for whom you think the PG year is not a great choice? I think for the student who's lower on motivation, um, I mean, one of the things that I found with those academic kids, um, as well as the athletes, I mean, they all had that fire in the belly, yeah. right? They all had a, a clear purpose for what they wanted to get out of that year. Um, because you know, if you talk to most juniors and seniors in high school and say, hey, would you like to do another year of high school? They would say, <laughs> no. No, <laughs> definitely not, yes. Absolutely not. So you know, the reason that they chose this is because they had that clear purpose, right? They knew exactly what they wanted to achieve. So if a student is looking for this experience to help them get that motivation, it's likely not gonna be the best pathway for them. Right. And probably even more to the point, if a parent is looking for this experience to give student the student the motivation, also unlikely to happen, right? At that point, Agreed. you're probably better off just going to the college that you were admitted to. And then if you find your motivation when you're there, then maybe you could apply to transfer, but doing one more year of high school might not be for everyone. Exactly. Um, and I've, I, I actually would say also, I've worked with some students from boarding schools where the concept of a PG year has come up. And in a few cases, we've decided against it, mainly because boarding school can actually sometimes be more of a, a more constricting than living at home. You often don't have a car, you can't, you don't have that freedom that you might have had as a senior in high school, right? And so for mm -hmm. these students, they just had kind of reached the limit of living away from home, but with no privileges associated with becoming 17 or 18 years old. And we just decided one more year of that just wasn't gonna work for them, so. Absolutely true. Yeah. Um, it is constricting and part of, the, part of the value of it, I think, was that it had a really strict structure. Mm -hmm. So every minute of the day, there was you know, some place to be and some place to go. There's a lot of, um, you just ways that they kind of occupy your time, mm -hmm. but that, but that is also kind of what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, we needed that structure. If you're looking for more freedom, this is definitely not the option. No, right. right. So yep. if you're chafing at home, then this is not going to be <laughs> what you want it to be. Um, but I think if, if it was the structure that what they put in place that helped us be successful. Yeah. So that's really interesting. So that brings me to the next big question, which is, you know, for some of our listeners, they may not have ever even heard of a PG year. Mm -hmm. um, some may have heard of one, but and maybe they knew of one place. And now they know of two because they've heard of Kimball Union from you. But how do you find a good PG program? And, you know, what's your sense of how many are even out there? Um, I think a good number of the private schools do have a PG option. And when I say private, uh, usually that's boarding schools yeah. um, will have a PG option. I think one of the things to be careful of, and I, this is what was really helpful for me, is to investigate before you go what the um, opportunities are going to be academically 
um, to make sure that they have the coursework that you're looking for? And then number two, what is, um, how do they incorporate PG students into their um, GPA calculations, their class rank calculations, et cetera? Right. And so if it's something completely separate or if um, you kind of utilize that entire uh, academic record to produce the GPA and rank, that might not be as, it's not a clean slate, right? It's right. not something where you might be able to project a little bit easier than uh, if they don't. So those would be just elements that I would encourage people to look at as they're considering some of these schools in PG years. Um, it was also only about an hour and a half from my home, so it wasn't that difficult to get home from the, for the weekends or on mm -hmm. breaks. Um, so I found that to be helpful too. Right. And was the quality of the counseling something that you looked at or even really thought about when you were evaluating programs? I didn't necessarily look at that going in, but it was kind of a, a fortunate happenstance that um, they were really supportive. Mm -hmm. And the, the teachers especially were fantastic. Yeah. Um, and so Mr. Howe, who was my math teacher, um, became kind of a, a mentor for years, <laughs> well beyond <laughs> nice. uh, my year there, um, and was just a, a fantastic person to, to kind of connect with. Um, and so, you know, I think that that would be the kind of thing that I would have them investigate off the bat. Um, but finding a good kind of cultural fit where there's a good number of PGs um, for that support network, right. I think is, is gonna be helpful for students to look at. Right, so if you're looking for that kind of program that you had where you all bonded together, if mm -hmm. you're going to a school where they're taking a couple of PGs every year, that might not be the ideal situation for you. So. Yeah, exactly. I think right. a critical mass is important. I, yeah, absolutely. It would seem to be, and again, not something that I have ever really thought about, but um, really good suggestions and thoughts for people and um, always helpful when it's based on your own personal experience. So um, thank you so much for joining us and, and sharing it with us, Kenan. My pleasure. All right. Well, um, Thanks again to Ken and to all of my guests this week. Um, next week, Sally is hosting. We're gonna be talking about how do you prepare for college level writing? I can tell you, my colleagues and I can all tell you, we see a lot of high school level writing and it needs work. And um, we have some suggestions for how maybe you can improve that writing uh, in preparation for going off to college. We're also doing another listener Q&A. If you have questions, please send them to us gettingin.voiceamerica at gmail.com. Again, it's gettingin.voiceamerica at gmail.com. You could also post questions on our Facebook page. You could post questions on our Instagram page. Um, we're at, col at College Coach BH on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Elizabeth Heaton 92 um, So if you have questions, please do reach out. And don't forget, we are here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. Pacific.